In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus' love for us is so great that he took time to look ahead and ensure we had all the help we would need after his return to the Father in heaven. He gave us himself in the Eucharist. He gave us the church and the other sacraments. And building on what he had already said and done, as we read in John's Gospel, that on the night before he died, he gave this commandment, a gentle instruction to his followers. Love one another as I have loved you. He gave us the example, the supreme example of his love for us by laying down his life on the cross. So to fully receive the gift of God's love, we have to be willing to share it with others, just as Jesus shares his love with all of us. As one writer puts it, love for those we can see brings us as close as we can on earth into the love of God whom we cannot see. And we mustn't overlook the additional qualification that Jesus added, namely, as I have loved you. His love for us is complete. No greater love has any man than to lay down his life for his friends, he tells us. As Christians, as followers of Jesus, we're called to be there for others, to make sacrifices for them and follow the example of Jesus. And this reminds me of a story, one which some may have heard already, and which comes from a priest lecturer I once had for a short time. It concerns Ruth. Ruth went to her mailbox and there was only one letter. She picked it up and looked at it before opening it. But then she looked at the envelope again. There was no stamp, no postmark, only her name and address. She read the letter. Dear Ruth, I'm going to be in your neighborhood Saturday afternoon and I'd like to stop by for a visit. Love always, Jesus. Her hands were shaking as she placed the letter on the table. Why would the Lord want to visit me? I'm nobody special. I don't have anything to offer. And with that thought, Ruth remembered her empty kitchen cabinets. Oh my goodness, I really don't have anything to offer. I'll have to run down to the store and buy something for dinner. She reached for her purse and counted out its contents. Five dollars and 40 cents. Well, I can get some bread and cold cuts, at least, she thought. She threw on her coat and hurried out the door. A loaf of French bread, a half pound of sliced turkey, and a carton of milk. Leaving Ruth 
with a grand total of 12 cents to last her until Monday. Nonetheless, she felt good as she headed home. Her meager offerings tucked under her arm. Hey, lady, can you help us, lady? Ruth had been so absorbed in her dinner plans, she hadn't even noticed two figures huddled in the alleyway. A man and a woman, both of them dressed in little more than rags. Look, lady, I ain't got a job, you know, and my wife and I have been living out here on the street. And well, now it's getting cold, and we're getting kind of hungry. And well, if you could help us, lady, we'd really appreciate it. Ruth looked at them both. They were dirty, they smelled bad, and frankly, she was certain that it could get some kind of work if they really wanted to. Sir, I'd like to help you, but I'm a poor woman myself. All I have is a few cold cuts and some bread, and I'm having an important guest for dinner tonight, and I was planning on serving that to him. Yeah, well, okay, lady, I understand. Thanks, anyway. The man put his arm around the woman's shoulders, turned, and headed back into the alley. As she watched him leave, Ruth felt a familiar twinge in her heart. Sir, wait. The couple stopped and turned as she ran down the alley after them. Look, why don't you take this food? I'll figure out something else to serve my guest. She handed the man her grocery bag. Thank you, lady. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. It was the man's wife. And Ruth could see now that she was shivering. You know, I've got another coat at home. Here, why don't you take this one? Ruth unbuttoned her jacket and slipped it over the woman's shoulders. And smiling, she turned and walked back to the car. Without her coat, I'm nothing to serve a guest. Thank you, lady. Thank you very much. Ruth was chilled by the time she reached her front door and worried too. The Lord was coming to visit and she didn't have anything to offer him. She fumbled through her purse for the door key but as she did, she noticed another envelope in her mailbox. That's odd. The mailman doesn't usually come twice in one day. She took the envelope out of the box and opened it. Dear Ruth, it was so good to see you again. Thank you for the lovely meal. And thank you, too, for the beautiful coat. Love always, Jesus. The air was still cold, but even without her coat, Ruth no longer noticed. If only we could love our neighbor always as Ruth in that story, words are easy. We say a great deal about love and love of neighbor, 
but what matters is how we put it into practice. Or, indeed, do we not practice this at all? It's easy, perhaps, to love, to show love in various ways to our friends, to people of similar lifestyles, similar values. And it may be encouraged by their gestures to us. So what about our behavior towards those who have drink problems, who are involved in drug taking, who are one of the down and outs, the rough sleeping and homeless, those who evidently have little or nothing, people maybe who have no faith, maybe also a people who disparage us. And then there are those in prison or are recently out of prison, as well as, of course, the sick and the bereaved. Do we cross over to the other side of the road when we see them, justifying our action by thoughts of avoiding risk, of not wanting to be insulted or to get into an argument. When we think about it, you know, we can come up with all sorts of excuses for not reaching out to those who are different in some way. Maybe that they make us feel uncomfortable, we're a little too well off to be seen associating with such people. Well, one has to say, we cannot avoid it. Jesus calls us to reach out, and that means reaching out to everyone. Whoever we come across and meet in the course of our lives. Maybe we won't always have food that we can give, or money, but we can give a smile. Maybe we can give some clothes, some spare clothes. Maybe we can help someone across the road. Little things can be very important. They can make all the difference. I began by speaking of love. Jesus is love. And he calls us as his followers also to engage in practicing love because what we're seeking to do is to grow into him. Certainly in the church, we're all called to be part of the mystical body of Christ. And that means we're all part of the one communion. If we truly belong to that, then there's no option. We have to empty our hearts of, if you like, these things that give us false security and avoid 
placing reliance on the comforts and material things of this world for signs of what we may think is showing love to others. We seek pure hearts, hearts filled with the love of God, with the love that Jesus gives us through the Holy Spirit. And we will be able to shake the hands of the leper. We'll be able to clothe the poor. So instead of crossing over the road to avoid those who are sleeping rough, or appear to be down and out. Maybe it's time for us to be more of the Good Samaritan. Instead of being one of those who pass by, then let us endeavor as best we can to act like the Good Samaritan. I mentioned earlier Jesus' act of love, that supreme act, no greater love as any man than to lay down his life for his friends. Well, maybe we're not called to lay down our life in the way Jesus did. But we are called to make sacrifices. And if we feel uncomfortable by engaging with the downtrodden, the marginalized, then it's a bit of a sacrifice. We can offer it up for the love of God. And you know, the more people who do that, even these little gestures, these little things, they all mount up. They make a difference. It's love in action. Love is what conquers the world. It's what brings us closer to the good Lord. And it's what the good Lord wants. It's his plan to bring love across the whole world, to restore peace, to overcome evil, and to give us that joy that comes only from God. So let us keep in mind that little story about Ruth and a letter from Jesus that the story recounts. And the example that is given of how she made such a difference and how the good Lord appreciates that kind of action. That's what we're called to. And you know, the greatest joy comes and lies in the giving rather than receiving. We're all familiar with that actual uh, practice and the saying linked very much to St. Francis of Assisi. So, if we give, we receive. We receive back peace and joy. And those who we give to receive the help from our loving gesture. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen. I want to give my blessing to Shalom TV, to all those who work in it, and to the work that they are doing, and all those who receive their message. I hope that you will continue to be God's instruments in the world and to evangelize with power and confidence. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Shalom World, God's own channel.